What's up everyone? Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com and I'm about to speak with the 9-3 John Tuck ahead of his UFC Fight Night 97 bout against Mehdi Baghdad in the Philippines on October 15th. So let's give him a call and find out what he's been up to as of late. Find out how his training camp is going for this bout and maybe his thoughts on getting to fight once again in the Philippines. Ah, Mr. John Tuck, how are you, sir? What's up, Eddie? I'm doing good. Just uh, ate a meal and recharged and ready for uh, ready for my travels. I leave tomorrow back to Guam. I'll be there for like four days and then uh, and then I'll, I'll be in Manila. Okay, awesome. Now, of course, you're nine and three as of right now, heading into your seventh UFC fight. Uh, of course, you're going back to the Philippines for your second fight. You got to be pretty amped about that, or maybe you're you're not excited since you're in training camp. Yeah, I mean, uh, no, I'm excited. I'm 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 ra raging and revving every day. Uh, it's like I wish I, I I don't know. I'm just I'm just at in phenomenal shape. Uh, I'm at the best right now, and and uh, I mean, I know every fighter says that going into a fight, but I really believe that's this is going to be my best performance to date, being the fact that. You know, I had a great training camp with Kings MMA and Spear Sport and all the people that have been helping me out here. And uh, everything's been going smooth. You know, and, you know, last camp I had so many injuries going into the fight, you know. It's like, but this camp is uh, it's been running, running smooth. Okay, awesome. Now, you're 3-3 three and three in the UFC as of right now. Your third fight in, you fought a guy named Jake Lindsay. And this fight was interesting. It was really competitive back and forth, but the way it ended was so unique. Now, you, you took his back, and you had him in a body triangle, and you were kind of switching sides, and then you were kind of heel striking the thigh, and then you started to heel strike the body. Now, I mean, yes. and, and the bout ended that way. I think you, you hit one of his floating ribs, and he couldn't continue. Now, I mean, did you ever think you would, you would stop a fight that way? And uh, not only that, but, I mean, was it a TKO or was it a submission? I'm still unclear on that. <laughs> well, yeah, it was a weird fight because in the first round, let me go to the first round, the ref stood us up from half guard while I was trying to advance position. Yeah, that was weird. And I was like, so second and third round shouldn't have happened, but because of the ref standing us up, I had to fight much longer, you know. So, anyways, we got to the third round. Um, hit him with some big shots, and uh, he tried to dump me, and I took his back. And, um, I mean, I do it all the time in training. Uh, I'll twist somebody to one side and try to get, a like, a, a spine twist on them. And then I'll start striking at their, their thighs to soften them up and then to their ribs as well. And, uh, I mean, I stopped some people... Actually, I stopped many people with the same kind of uh, strike with the heels to the, the ribs. But I usually do it to soften them up so they can stop thinking about about the uh, heel uh, about the choke and uh, focus on the heel strike so that I can sink in the rear naked choke or switch to an arm bar real quick. Okay, yeah, it was definitely unique. I don't think I've ever seen it before, and uh, definitely cool to watch. Now, following that bout, I actually got to see you fight uh, Kevin Lee at UFC 178 in Vegas. Really exciting bout, back and forth. Um, real, um, not, not testy, but, you know, there were quite a few low blows going down. Um, but still, a real back and forth bout. Now, after that, you went to the Philippines. And, I mean, this was a, sort of a coming out party. I mean, you fought a... Tai Hoon Bang, if I said that right. And I mean, yes. absolutely, I mean, you put the stamp on him. I think you finished him with a, a crazy sequence. It was like a lead hook, uh, like a jab, 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 and like an axe kick to right hook that dropped him. And then you, you took yeah. his back, flattened him out, choked him out. Absolutely ran through the guy. Now you're heading back to the same place. Are you going to repeat the performance that you had the first time? Yeah, I mean, like like I said, I'm excited to go back to the Philippines. It's it's a three hour flight from Guam, and 
people in the region. I have a great following over there. And uh, it, for me, I mean, until I win the belt one day, you know, then maybe we can have a UFC Guam. But for now, you know, we'll keep it in the Asia region so that people can fly out and support me, you know, because it's, it's for me, I, lo- I love the energy because people come out and support me. There's no pressure, just a pure excitement. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to put on a, an amazing show and performance like I did last time. And like I always do, I try to shoot for those fight of the night performance of the night bonuses. Okay. So hopefully I'm lucky this time again. All right. Now, how many times a year do you actually get to go back home to Guam? Uh, I'm there. I live there mainly, and then I do my camps out. Uh, now I'm with Kings, of course. I've uh, been doing training camps with them for two camps now. And, and uh, you know, they they treat me like, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm actually theirs. And... Uh, they treat me like family, and, and that's all I, you know, that's all I could ask for. Everybody's got good vibes, you know. There's no egos, and uh, yeah, I just sacrifice time away from my family for the two months to be able to put it on the line and, and come out with the big group. Okay, now Kings MMA, of course, Rafael Cordero, the evil genius behind it. With all due respect, uh, absolute legend. I mean. A stable of the who's who's from RDA, from Bree Silver Doom, Glory Kickboxing, Kickboxer, uh, Giga Chikadze's in there, Benil Dariush is in there as well. I mean, that's a, a pretty mean squad you have to train with there. Um, do you get yeah, to spar with those guys and all that? Say, say it again? Do you get to spar with any of those guys? I know some of them are obviously heavier. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, I spar with Verdum all the way to the smallest guy, like, uh, it's the guy Michael, and then there's like Nolan Tickman, but everybody. Uh, Jake Ellenberger has been a huge help. I go with Kelvin Gasolim a lot, and Benny Dariush. We just finished the training together uh, right before this uh, session, and um, everybody. We go everybody. Machida going in there, sparring Machida, Dos Anjos, and and uh, yeah. The level, the level, and uh, the energy is uh, is, is awesome. Okay, Benil has a fight coming up pretty soon, I believe, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he's fighting in the Mexico City card uh, against uh, Rashid Magomedov. For it, okay. Like this. Oh wow! Yeah, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be exciting. Now, um, so after your bang fight, um, you went through some injuries, right? Like, kind of. Take us through exactly what you were experiencing and, and kind of, you know, were you, how close to 100% were you going into the uh, Emmett fight? Um, so I, I fought the bank fight, had an injury with my shoulder, and uh, tore my labrum, so I had to get a surgery. I was actually supposed to fight Nick Heim uh, September in Japan, but I couldn't, I couldn't get no shots. I needed my right arm because he's a softball fighter and I needed to throw my right hand to, you know what I mean, land on his face. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, I had to get surgery and uh, it took me out for a bit. And when I when I got my surgery, uh, they told me it wouldn't be until like a year or a year and a half till I got into a ne- another fight. But uh, I went out and did my my rehab over at OC Fight Docs and uh, treated like a training camp and I was fighting within uh, within eight months from my surgery. And, uh, you know, going into the Josh Emmett fight was, I had, a, I had injuries all over the place from my foot to my knee. But I mean, no excuses, you know. Uh, it's a sacrifice and taking, taking the risk, you know, you got to, I mean, I still had a great training camp. I was in the best shape at that time, uh, especially because I worked with Kings and then Speed of Sport. They really, uh, really made sure my cardio was in another level, and uh, also wrestling at Calvary Chapel with Jacob Harmon. So I was, I was ready to go. I mean, I wouldn't blame the injuries as for anything else, but you know, it was just, it was just part of the game that he won that night. You know, we. We rematch should be a different, a totally different story. Okay. Now, uh, towards the end of the fight, I think you threw like a, a wheel kick or something, and you actually broke Josh's finger to the point where the bone was sticking out through the skin. At what point 
in the fight, did you realize that, hey, this guy's finger's messed up. I'm going to go in and, and go for the kill. Um, closer to the end, most mostly because I didn't know for sure if I hurt his hand or what. And um, I just noticed that he started dropping his hand a bit more. So I was like, okay, I think it's – but I didn't want to go in there reckless trying to take him out and then – and then uh, turns out his hand was okay, you know what I mean. So uh, I noticed that he had some some uh, some injury to his hand, but I didn't know wh what it exactly was. And uh, yeah, it was a close fight, you know. Okay, now in that fight, you got hit in the balls. He got hit in the balls. And actually, in your past three fights, ball shots just have been happening. Now. You know, they're unintentional, obviously unintentional. But what is it about your style that kind of allows for so many ball shots? Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, I always I always hit that inner that inner uh, inner thigh with the leg with the leg kick. And uh, with the Kevin Lee, they deducted me a point. But man, I took a really bad shot you know, with, from his knee and, uh, I was deducted a point for grazing him, you know what I mean? Barely even. And, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of what shot me down a bit with the, uh, with the points because they deducted one point for me. But, uh, with Josh Emmett, it was fairly, uh, fairly, uh, I would say, I, I don't think I, I hit him hard with any kick to, to his, uh, jewels. <laughs> but uh, it's I don't know. It's just you know, it's just part of the game. I don't intentionally try to kick these guys. You know what I mean? I wouldn't get, I want to get hurt in that same area either. So sure. So I try to I try to be precise where I you know I I place my strikes. And uh, sometimes I guess they just come in that that uh you know that's where the strikes land. Okay. Now I mean, you also throw high volume kicks and knees and. People move, try to get out of the way, things happen. And, I mean, they definitely appear unintentional. But it is, I mean, it's part of the game. Do you, uh, do you like, get a special cup or anything? Or have you looked into, like, different types of cups to kind of minimize the damage that does occur during, during that? Man, sometimes it doesn't even matter what kind of cup you use. I mean, I haven't found a cup that actually kept me safe, you know. I wish I, wish I didn't take that... that Nut shot in uh, the Kevin Lee fight. That one took a lot. I felt like throwing up right after, but I wasn't going to wig out and say, hey, I can't fight because I got smashed in the nuts, you know? But, uh, yeah, I haven't found any any exact cup that, that uh, kept me well protected. Okay. Now, on your plate right now, Medi Baghdad, he was on the Ultimate Fighter. I mean, he's a finisher, 11 and 5. 0 and 2 right now in the UFC. What do you think of this guy? Uh, actually, uh, he ended up pulling out like three weeks ago. Oh, did he? So I'm oh, fighting wow. a guy named Alex Volkanovsky. He's making his debut. He was an Australian champ at 55, and he was a 45 champ. Uh, okay. He's like 5'5. Five, five. I think in uh, height, so it's a total different height advantage, uh, height, height change. But you know, I got the reach and everything on this guy, and um, so total, total different opponent. Okay, now have you? I mean, how much tape do you have you seen on this guy? I mean, is there uh, much he, footage on him? Yeah, he he's got some uh, some good footage on, on the net. You know, I let my coaches watch his fights, but I've seen him fight live. Uh, he's fought in Guana, uh, Guam a couple times, so I, I'm familiar with him. And, uh, you know, I train with the best, so it's, and, and for sure, I know where I stand in the world, you know. it's I, I just got to get consistent with these fights, winning fight by fight each time, and I'm going to start it off with, with uh, my opponent this coming Saturday. Okay, now, kind of like you're saying, consistency. You kind of win-loss, win-loss, win-loss. What do you think it's going to take for you to kind of tie all the pieces together and put together a winning streak? Well, I really got a good team that's 
watching and dialing everything in, making sure I'm not overtraining because I'd run down my body completely. I wouldn't get massages to re rehab. I should jump in the ice bath more often, this and that. And, and I think uh, as a professional athlete, you know, you, you really got to make sure you recover just as hard as you train. And uh, I've been uh, I've been training hard where it's like full on fighting in the gym. But at the same time, I'm recovering just as hard. And and everything's been everything's been uh, playing out well. And I look forward to staying consistent with uh, fight by fight. You know, I'm, I'm a big I'm actually a big lightweight. So so. Uh, that too, I got to make sure I always keep myself healthy with the uh, right nutrition and everything else like that. Okay. Have you ever thought about cupping? I know that's like a big thing right now. Michael Phelps was yeah, in the Olympics. Yeah, I haven't tried cupping yet, but uh, I heard it's amazing. Uh, my friend uh, or my training partner and friend, uh, Benny, Benny, he, uh, he, he does a lot of cupping. He said it's amazing. And I just haven't got to try it this camp, but I heard many great things about it. All the top athletes seem to be doing it. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's something to it. I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, so you're, you're having a pretty good training camp. You're saying, what can we expect? What kind of uh, – are, are we going to get a finish out of John Tuck? Uh, so, you know, my fighting style, I always look for the finish. Most importantly, I'm not trying to grind out rounds, trying to win, win by the point system, you know, like some other fighters – They'll play the game till they they get in the third round and or fifth round, whatever, and uh, ride it out till then. You know, I mean that's the chess about it, I guess. But uh, I'm always looking for the finish. You know, uh, whether it be submission or or by KO, and uh, that's that's all I look for in, in this fight too, especially. Okay, now with a win, what would be next for you? Already your seventh fight in the UFC and where are you at exactly with your contract? How many fights do you have remaining? Uh, I got five, four fights, uh, four on the contract. And, um, yeah, for me, like I said, I, I know where I stand in, in the, in the world. I know I'm top 10 level, you know, one day I could be a champion and, uh, I just got to stay consistent in getting into getting fight by fight, you know, being healthy and going into the next one. But, the next fight, you know, I'm not looking forward. Uh, I'm not looking past my opponent, of course, but, uh, you know, just got to handle my business coming next Saturday and and uh, we'll see from there. But I plan to keep it consistent and, and getting more fights in as much as I can. Awesome. Now, how can uh, people follow you on your journey? What are your social media platforms? Uh, so you find me on Snapchat, Instagram. And Twitter at, at John Cruz Tuck, J O N C R U C T U C K. And uh, yeah, you can find me on there, you know, from the island of Guam. And hope you guys follow me on this journey to, to the top. Awesome. You got any uh, sponsors or people you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody at Kings MMA, Speed of Sport, you know, um, people out here in California. And Flow Therapy Spa, Therapy Crow Salon, OC Fight Dogs, and uh, Calvary Chapel, and, and uh, you know, also in Guam, you know, my, my main supporters, ITNE, and uh, DNA Inc., and so many, so many supporters, Shoro, Bano Fredo, and uh, so many people taking care of me, and then also, the love from from my island is is uh it's just it's just amazing from these guys, you know, who take care of me. Middle Lake Guam too helps me out, and they they do a great job. And uh, yeah, so much more. Mungy Pops even got a popsicle uh, popsicle connect. So if you ever go to Guam, come check out some popsicles. Okay. Uh, yeah, so many more. You know, awesome. got a I've got a great support system and and people that that I'm blessed with. Uh, you know, God, God has put in, put in my life and uh, made sure that, that I'm well surrounded and, and uh, you know, taken care of. Awesome. Final question. Will you be bringing back the Super Saiyan hair at any time? Yeah, you know, 
Uh, it's possible because uh, I like to lay in without the the blonde hair, and then fight night I come with the blonde hair. But you know that re- I think it was like less than t- maybe less than twenty four hours we fight. You know, so it's a lot of hassle for me. But we'll see what this new uh, weight cutting system. You know, weigh in early in the morning and don't have to worry about it. But uh, we'll see. Uh, I I like it. But, um, you know, Super Saiyan Blue or Super Saiyan uh, Rosé is the new thing. So we'll see how, how that goes. Okay, that would be awesome. That would definitely be awesome. Well, John Tuck, thank you so much for taking out the time. You got a huge fight ahead of you. You're heading back to the Philippines for the second time. UFC Fight Night 97. Best of luck to you, sir. Thank you. You have a good one. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Have a good one, man. You too, bro. Oh, real quick. Was yes. uh, that Jake Lindsay fight, is that a submission or was that a TKO? I think it was a TKO submission. It's rare. Okay, because I... Uh, they stopped it. They stopped it like a TKO, but he was tapping, so... Yeah, like... On, it was a submission. On, on Shog, it has it as a TKO due to, uh, due to submission from a heel kick. On Technology, yeah. it has it as a submission... Uh, you know, due to strikes. So I'm still, I don't yeah. know. I don't know how to classify that. <laughs> it's unique, man. It's definitely unique. It's a uh, STKO, submission TKO. <laughs> I like it, man. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much, man. You have a good one. Thank you, brother. So there you have it. The 9-3 and three John Tuck set to take on Alex Volkanovsky at UFC Fight Night 97 in the Philippines on October 15th. In the meantime, you can read me on bloodyelbow.com. Follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado. And go be a good person.